everyone, my name is Natasha, and today I'm going to be demonstrating a comprehensive method for finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a 3x3 matrix. I'm not going to go deep into the linear algebraic theory behind these concepts, but I will give some super simplified context before we start. So any system of linear equations can be written as a matrix, right? And you can plot the columns of that matrix as individual vectors. When you apply any linear transformation to that matrix, it'll change along what's called an axis of deformation. If a certain linear transformation produces a perfectly scaled up version of our original system of vectors that falls along the exact same axis without shifting or rotating or anything, then that transformed vector is called an eigenvector. Whatever scalar factor it was stretched by is the eigenvalue. If the length doesn't change at all, then the eigenvalue is one. Let's treat this photo of my cat Leo as our coordinate plane. Those three arrows are all component vectors of a matrix. When we apply a linear transformation to our system, like shear mapping or stretching Leo out along his horizontal, certain changes occur. The red and green vectors are notably displaced by a certain angle, but the blue vector stays perfectly locked on the x-axis. So we can say that that blue vector is an eigenvector. You might notice that it also looks about 25% shorter in length than the original did, so we could estimate that its eigenvalue is 3 fourths. So to recap, the eigenvector summarizes the directionality of our transform vector, and the eigenvalue provides the multiplier of its sized up dimensions. If everything I just said makes zero sense, I'm very sorry, and I would recommend just doing some googling until it clicks. Alright, let's get started. Say that M is a 3x3 matrix with the following values. The first thing we want to do is write what's called a characteristic equation in this form, where M is our matrix, I is the identity matrix of M, lambda is the unknown eigenvalue, and DET is just the determinant of the whole thing. To represent this equation in matrix form, you would just subtract lambda along the diagonal and then set the whole thing equal to zero. Since this is linear algebra, I'm assuming you already know how to find the determinant of a matrix, so I'll just paste that work right here. You can pause it if you want to look how I did it. Then you would just solve that equation that I highlighted like you would any other polynomial. From this first expression, we get that lambda 1 equals 1, and for the second one, we get that lambda equals plus or minus 7, so we could let those be lambda 2 and 3. And those are our eigenvalues. Okay, type. Now, we can find an eigenvector that corresponds with each of those eigenvalues. Plug your lambda 1 value back into your matrix. Multiply it by a 3 by 1 variable matrix, that's the x, y, and z column, for your unknown eigenvector, and then just set everything equal to a column of zeros. It's like the same thing as setting it equal to zero. Go ahead and multiply everything out to make a system of three linear equations. The x, y, and z line up with their respective polynomial slots, so our first row just becomes 2z equals 0, because the x and y coefficients are both 0. The second is 2x plus z equals 0, and the third is 3x minus 2z equals 0. Now we can begin narrowing down the solution by setting x equal to 1. When x equals 1, equations 2 and 3 produce non-equivalent values for z, so we know that x is not in fact equal to 1. Let's try x equals 0. Okay, cool. Yeah. x equals 0 produces a result of z equals 0, so that's two indexes in our eigenvector done, the x and z index. Since y doesn't appear at all in our system of equations, we can't solve for it by substitution or elimination. But we can assume that y equals 1 the same way we assumed that x equals 1 in the beginning, and then check to see if that whole thing provides a valid solution. You can prove a solution is correct by seeing if the original matrix multiplied by the eigenvector is equivalent to the eigenvalue multiplied by the eigenvector, or mv equals lambda v. After multiplying and cancelling everything out, our two expressions are indeed equal, so that's our eigenvector for the first value. For our lambda 2 value, you can just follow the same first steps. Subtract negative root 7, or add positive root 7, along the diagonal, and then write it all out as a system of equations. When we let x equal 1, we get two different results for z, so we know that that can't be the real value of x. Letting y equal 1 is pretty useless because we don't actually have a second expression with y in it to compare to. So let's set z equal to 1 and solve it out. Once we rationalize the denominator, 
Both expressions give us x equals 1 minus root 7 over 3, so we know that's valid. And now, we plug our x and z values into equation 2 to solve for y. During these algebra steps, it's super easy to make mistakes with sign conventions and fractions and stuff, so just take it slow. Okay, sick. We found x, y, and z, and that's our eigenvector for lambda 2. And finally, let's solve for lambda 3. Again, you can follow the same steps in the beginning to determine a solvable system of equations. For our previous eigenvalue of negative root 7, z equals 1 worked really well to find the eigenvector, and root 7 is just the positive version, so we should try that first. The steps proceed pretty much identically to the last one, but just with inverted signs. 1 minus root 7 becomes 1 plus root 7, and 19 minus 7 root 7 becomes 19 plus 7 root 7. And that's about it. We found all three eigenvalues and a viable eigenvector to correspond with each one. If you really want, you can double check your answers using that mv equals lambda v method, but I'm about 80% certain that these are correct. There's another method for finding eigenstuff using null spaces and reduced row echelon form, but that approach is kind of confusing and this one works just as well. As always, if you have any questions, suggestions, or requests for future videos, you can leave a comment and I'll reply as soon as I can. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you want. No pressure though, and I'll see you all next time.